Hello, for those of you who haven't met me, my name is Chris Audette. I am a techie person slash IT person who works in Winkler, Manitoba, doing factory stuff, babysitting a whole bunch of computers, and uh, lots of fun techie things. My experience level with, uh, with Linux, I still consider myself fairly introductory. So the, the strategy that I'm using for these presentations is to try and keep it surface level, try and keep this at a beginner level. It's, it's so if something doesn't make sense, this uh, I, I don't want to claim a hundred level, a hundred percent level of expertise on anything. So I'm always open to discussion and always open to feedback. So happy to learn. And that brings me to my next point here. This is an ongoing project that uh, I'm working on to try and consolidate a whole bunch of data. And as a result, not everything is working the way that I want it to. There is. This is an active area of research. I'm trying to figure out what the best solution is for the problem. We'll get into it in a little bit more detail later on the presentation. So a lot of this is probably pretty surface level, probably doesn't quite make sense yet. And I just want to be real upfront about this because there's a lot of stuff here that I want to implement that hasn't really come together yet. Ideally, it would have been better to kind of wait another three months or something and we would have been able, would be closer to the tail end of this project but uh, that's probably okay. We might be able to have a bit of a discussion about it. But yeah, just a heads up. So the goal of this presentation here is just a demo of ButterFS and its massive variation of deduplication capabilities, which caught me by surprise, and a bit of what we're trying to do with it. How are we going to start with that? It's going to be scuff, bruh. So this is kind of where I started off. I've got a massive research document that's like 10 pages deep trying to go into how to best break down this problem and how to best approach it. But this is it's essentially like a whole bunch of research on how to effectively dedupe a bunch of data. The thing that caught me by surprise is that you typically see people recommending ZFS as the primary way of dealing with this, and that comes with a whole bunch of really intense system requirements. And the thing that I didn't realize until tackling this is that the reason why those system requirements are intense, you're gonna see people recommending uh, uh, ECC or recommending like large amounts of RAM, is because that ZFS is usually doing the deduplication in band. So essentially, when you're writing data into an array, it's keeping a whole bunch of stuff in memory and doing a bunch of calculations to figure out what can be deduped or not deduped before it's being written to disk. But you don't have to do it that way. There is this thing called out-of-band deduplication. And my experience with this has been fairly limited. The, I, you typically see utilities on Windows where it's like, hey, scan through all of your, uh, all of your files and essentially figure out if you have any files that have the same checksum. And if you do, delete the duplicates or delete it and leave a, a hard link so that you, your applications don't, don't just break. And you kind of are able to fool the system into, into working that way. And that's, that's fine. It's not quite what I'm looking for in this project. But this is actually very interesting because you don't have to run this in real time. You could have like a potato PC, just run this once in a blue moon like on a, as a scheduled job and still get a decent result. Especially if you have a large collection of files like uh, family media or movies or something or Linux ISOs that don't change very often. It might be fine to run this on a schedule every once in a blue moon. Kind of going into the whole uh, dedupe stuff. When, I was, when I'm kind of like looking at dedupe concepts, block seems the most intuitive but it depends. I'm, this is something I'm not really sure because it's like, okay, this, is not, this isn't too, too crazy. You're comparing checksums of files versus just doing blocks, but when would you want to do one versus the other? This is kind of an open question. I'm not sure when it would make the most sense to do one versus the other. Like most of the solutions I'm seeing are file level dedupe, but I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. One thing that caught me by complete surprise when looking into dedupe solutions for Linux is that most of the tools 
are not running at the file system level. They're utilities that you run, like on a schedule. And there's a massive variety of them because that they're able to just run in user space. I don't know why there's so many of them that run in user space rather than kind of tightly integrated into the file system. Like when we're talking about ButterFS specifically, just about there is no native ButterFS solution. So if you're using something like uh, dedupe on NTFS, it's literally a feature that you install and it's just provided by like the one vendor. You don't have a lot of options, but here you have a ton of options. And a lot of these options will work on multiple different file systems. There is a amount of options here that I was completely unprepared for. And there is no official option. So um, I'm kind of speed running through a lot of stuff real quick and I'm really hesitant to go into a lot of detail because I have a very surface level understanding over a lot of these topics. Is there anything that we want to kind of dive into more detail or just to kind of clarify before we keep going? Does this kind of make sense so far? Okay. I love your thought process. Just talking about how, you're, how you go through it, so. I mean, if, if I had an in-depth understanding, then I would be a lot more happy to just go into, into the weeds. But it's like, at this point, this is problem solving. I'm not at the point where we have a working solution yet. So I'll give a bit of an example here because we're kind of going into, into techie details. Uh-oh. Oh, no. What am I missing? No one ever solves anything, buddy. Like, you're just fine. I mean, yeah. if we go, uh, I, I reach a point in which things. No, oh no, no, my no. God, yeah. No one actually knows what they're doing. <laughs> oh, no. <Ever. laughs> okay. I mean, you're not wrong, but. Yeah. I mean, the part, one of the requirements of this project is that it ends at some point. <laughs> I mean, you could do that right now. You can do it anytime. I mean, you you know, like, but yeah. I mean, you could not do that ever, and it would work. I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> So I guess, I guess I could kind of explain a little bit what we're trying to do. So, uh, th fun fact, this is why I dragged my old man around here because uh, he's, been, he's been putting up with, uh, with my questions and, uh, and my nonsense while we kind of figure some of this stuff out. The main reason why this has become a priority for me the last few months is we have a... Uh, a uh, we have a lot of hard drives. Like uh, there's, there's essentially like a, a collection of, uh, of hard drives that has been building up since, I, I would you say like 20, I, I'd say like early 2020s, oh, no, 2000s? Early 2000s. Yeah, give or take. Like, I think that's around the time when we started building PCs. Yeah. yeah. So there's, a, there's just hard drives that have been stacking up for like a couple decades at this point. And uh, we haven't been throwing them out as we go. So it's usually like you get a hard drive and all the data gets merged over to a newer hard drive when you buy a new hard drive and you need more space. The old hard drives stick around forever. They never get like trimmed or cleaned up. They just kind of accumulate. So it's gotten to the point where it's very difficult to manage collections of files. So we have a, uh, a bunch of family media that's just accumulated because uh, my old man's an early adopter of tech. This is a big reason of why I got into tech is because he, uh, he's, he's kind of like allowed me to dip my toes in many times over the years. Elite is a dirty word. Well, I mean, so there's a lot of uh, like old family videos, old family photos and stuff like that. A lot of things that have been digitized over the years via scanning and it's just accumulated. And, uh, but the problem is because of the way that, uh, that it's been migrated to new stuff over the years, it's very hard to manage, it's very hard to organize. So if we want to add metadata and add some structure to it, something that makes it easier to pass on, easier to, 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 to kind of keep around, you kind of have to structure it. But if it's spread out over a ton of different places, it's impossible to organize it. So the plan here is take all this data, consolidate it into one place, and then you can go through the whole sorting process, but you gotta start by consolidating it. So back in April 29, we literally just spent a weekend just going through everything. And uh, this is what we ended up with. <laughs> this picture doesn't really do it justice. I've got, I've got a much less exciting, like this is just one teeny tiny part of the collection. It's not that cool. But essentially, you've got this box, one stack of hard drives, one stack of hard drives, one stack of hard drives, lots and lots of tiny little USBs, uh, 
3.2 inch hard drives that are inside of USB enclosures that have been stacked up in here. Just probably about like a half dozen of those. Tons of laptop hard drives, shucked hard drives. Uh, the ammo box is stuff that's been in kind of like a grab and go container. So it's like, oh, there's a tornado coming or whatever. You just grab this, shove it in your car. It's like, great, you save the family pictures. Fantastic. That's kind of the idea. So you just have all these drives and you just have this massive duplication of data over the years. And I should have just spread this out over a table to just give a better idea of the scale of what this is. It's kind of like you kind of have an idea here and you've got like a few boxes that are like this where you just have this DVDs for days. And a lot of this is also the same data, I think. Yeah, it's all different data. It was another method of backing up. So you do it on a hard drive, then you do it on another type of medium, which is yeah, so you, you, you get like kind of a few different layers of backup, right? So if something breaks, you kind of have a plan B. So it makes sense. Drives for days. So after all of this big old inventory, came to the conclusion there's approximately 90 hard drives, give or take a few dozen. I don't know if I can share this, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe I can. Okay, let me pull this up. See if there's uh, nothing to. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, just ignore that. Just ignore it. Yeah, okay, I don't have a link to it. I've got like a, basically a gigantic spreadsheet filled with all the different models and roughly the contents or whatnot, just to try and estimate the dedupe. By the way, this is an open question. I, I pulled the MFT tables from all the hard drives that we had on this table, and we're trying to figure out estimate what the potential dedupe was. You look like you got, just thinking, okay. I was trying to figure out if you could estimate how much dedupe you would get, and I, I'm not sure if that's even possible. Because all the utilities that I've looked at are typically vendor specific, if you're tr like to be used as part of a sales process, and there's not a whole lot of ways of estimating the dedupe potential without just running a dedupe. And I'd love to be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct about this. So yeah, key learning from this whole thing is that deduplication is not really a solved problem. It's, this is a challenging issue that is not trivial, but whatever. So long story short, there's about 244 terabytes of data here. And out of the uh, the family media, like the part that, that is pushing this project is probably about 900 gigabytes of real data. So there is an absolutely massive amount of deduplication going on in here. So the conclusion from all this is it's probably not realistic to even attempt this without some kind of way of deduping the data, unless you wanted to sort it as you go, which is a massive amount of work. So the last two months have been investigating a ton of different dedupe solutions, trying to figure out what makes sense. And uh, yeah, I'm, there's a bunch of requirements. We're not gonna go into it. We're gonna, gonna spare you all the juicy details, but uh, I'll show you what that looks like at a very basic level, I think. Let me just pull something up here. Terrific, nothing in chat. So I do want to stress that I went under this with the assumptions that you had NTFS dedupe, ZFS dedupe, ButterFS dedupe, and maybe something else. And those assumptions are not correct. There's a bunch of other stuff out there. So I wouldn't take this as conclusive. But not only that, but I'm not finding that a lot of the Linux dedupe solutions are ButterFS specific. So there's a lot of question marks here that I'm still trying to figure out. But we can speed through through a uh, like a demo example here. I'm going to assume that you already have ButterFS stuff on your system, which may or not be true. Let's uh, let's pull this up. Oh, this is going to be annoying. We're going to go back and forth. Don't judge. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to assume that I already have this, but let's double check. I'm pretty sure 
Butterfest just ships with Fedora? Or it's just in the kernel? I'm not entirely sure about that, though. Uh, Fedora Workstation? Yes, that's default. I think this is the server version. Like, it's... I don't have to do anything special. Like, I believe I just had this off the bat. Oh, wait, no. I gotta do... Uh, uh, Yeah, I don't know. I, I got this one for free. Yeah, not entirely sure. But uh, yeah, it turns out if you don't have it, that's basically all you need. I think this ships with the kernel, though, so it's just the utilities. You know what? Hang on. We're getting whiplash here. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to ignore all this stuff. I'm essentially just doing recon, trying to figure out what's available. I'm not sure how much of this is relevant to my specific use case. So there's just a lot of question marks there. So I will remind you that I am not totally familiar with the process of basic system administration on Linux. So when I have to stumble through it, this is my process. I'm gonna go into, I make pretty heavy usage of cockpit to try and figure things out. So here you got your drives. Let's see if I got a 16 gig drive here. There is absolutely nothing here. So this is just a virtual drive that I shoved into the uh, hypervisor for fun. And we're not actually gonna do that much here. Also, do not do this. This is probably wrong. Everything that I've learned from ButterFS so far is that you wanna use sub-volumes to be able to make use of most of the cool features. So I'm reasonably sure that doing it this way is does not let you use any of the cool features and you probably don't wanna do it. But we're gonna do it anyway. Oh yeah, actually, hang on, before we do that. Is that? That's probably why. Actually, here, check this out. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. I'm going to attempt to do this through here. Fordora dedupe two mount Fedora dedupe two. This is something I was trying to figure out. So it doesn't actually let you do ButterFS in cockpit, and I'm not sure why. So you kind of have no choice but to do things the hard way slash better way. Huh. Oh yeah, I'm running as root, that's gonna be fine. So you can kind of jump through some hoops and just do it. I'm not sure what kind of trade-offs there are. I'm assuming there's issues with the method I'm using. There be dragons. Oh no. Get. Because once it's actually created, it seems Fine, like it detects it as ButterFS, so I'm not sure why it makes you jump through that extra hoop there. It's a little bit strange. But at that point, you just kind of set at the mount point. Fedora. Uh, two. And I'm 100% assuming there's a more elegant way of doing this. So one thing that I've noticed that's been mentioned multiple times is the DFH utility does not return correct information when, you when you're when using a file system like this because there's a lot of special considerations that DFH doesn't know about. So you have to use native stuff. There's a lot of cool tools that uh, reproduce similar similar information to, uh, to other tools. You just kind of have to know about it, I guess. But the main one that I want to talk about is this one over here. Let's clear this up. I guess it's dedupe 2 in this case. Okay. By the way, is this text legible or do I have to bump it up a little bit? Good. Tolerable? Perfect. So this is a helpful sort of kind of. The main issue I have with this is it'll tell you about metadata, it'll tell you about real data, like this is, this is decent, but because that there's all of the, the DBOOP utilities I'm looking at 
are not tightly integrated into ButterFS, the ButterFS tools are not going to know about dedupe stuff. It's going to lie to you. So I'm not actually sure how to get accurate information out of these on a consistent basis. It's, I'm really not sure what the strategy is quite yet. Not to mention that it would probably depend on which tool that you're using. Speaking of which, this is the most straightforward method I'm able to find. Ugh. There is actually, you know what? Whoa. There is a metric ton of different tools available that let you do this. Does it really make me jump through hoops? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. These are the main ones that you're gonna see come up over and over. There's, this is a very short list. There's really like eight different utilities that are spread around. As far as I can tell, all deduplication on ButterFS is considered experimental, but it seems to depend on a, a lot on who you ask. So it's, there's a bit of a lack of information floating around here for people at my knowledge level. So it's tough to say, I don't wanna have strong recommendations on this. If I had to make a decision today, I'd use bees, but I would just as easily use something like VDO instead of BetterFS. What do we got here? So as an example, this is easy mode. If we're using one of these user space level utilities, let's just use dupe remove. And let's run it on the location that we just set up. Absolutely nothing happens as expected. So we're gonna have to get some data in there and you kind of see what the output looks like. Oh, uh, yeah, here we go. Check this out. <coughs> I suspect there's a more straight way forward way of working through this, but bear with me. Cool, cool. And we're just gonna connect to it with SSH and see if we can load up some, uh, some files. This is what, 7.2. Uh, this might still work, let's find out. Yeah, there you go. As a quick aside, every day I miss the ability to just mount, mount SSH locations in, uh, in the GNOME file manager. It's so freaking nice, dude. It's so sick, dude, yeah. You can just have, you can just load SSH locations and just browse them like a regular file share, essentially. It's sick. So I've got, uh, I've got essentially like an old BBB recording hanging out over here. Oh, this better not take too long. 10 seconds, I can tolerate that, that's fine. That's not bad. And yes, this is gonna work pretty much the way that you expect it to. Blah, 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 blah. So it just kind of hashes stuff. Yeah, of course, there's no dedupe because there's literally just one file in there. And if you add more, you're gonna get the, the result you expect. So my concern, let's just try and break it. contents because I think this one is file level so the fact that it's doing it while the files are halfway uploaded is probably just going to cause it to break yeah zero identical extents that's about right so let's pull this up here so this is what I was trying to figure out We go to, da, 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 I believe allocated is the one that we care about here. And I'm expecting that this is gonna be exactly the same after we do the dedupe. Also noticing that if you're using an external program like this after dedupe, it's gonna be get confused if you try and, uh, and to, how do you say this? If you try and upload a file, to the location, it's not gonna know the diff, like it's gonna, 
I think something's getting screwed up with the hard linking. I'm not entirely sure why it's breaking yet, but whatever, you'll see. So let's take a look. It's 152. So you're doing the dedupe, and it is d wait. Found zero ed what? Zero identical? That's not right. What the heck? What's it complaining about? All right, that's cool. That's not what I was expecting at all. So found zero examples of extents from dedupe. Oh, that's weird, bro. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why that would be the case, unless I made a typo somewhere. Because, uh, essentially, yeah, it's just doing the dedupe and doing recursive, so I'm not sure where... Oh, wait, no, I'm running this as root. I don't think that would matter, though. Yeah, it's weird. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going wrong here. But, yeah. I would expect this to not change. I'd also expect an output from the dedupe remove to tell you the approximate amount that was deduped, the amount of data that you saved. But this isn't like indempotent. Like, it's not a good way to get status information about the area that you're deduping. It's just when you're doing it the first time. So it's kind of useless. I'm thinking there's a better strat, but in this tool specifically, there isn't. There is likely a better way of doing this. We could try it. it. Yeah, it definitely should have done what you wanted. Uh, how do you do it? Yeah, so, yeah, just cd to slash mount fedora. Or slash mount fedora. And then the MD5 MD5 star. Is that what it is? I don't, yeah. Just do all of them. Just do star. MD5 sum does. Oh, they are the same? Hmm. Well, let me figure it out. That's mysterious. Yeah, that is a little bit strange. Does it care about the file name? No, no, For some reason? I, if it did, that'd be a bit of a problem, actually. Nothing to do with the file name. Yeah, I, w I would expect it to be okay. I use this on my, my wine it's Steam directory. Oh. There's so much duplication in wine. Yeah. I have a really dumb idea. What if you run... How often do you have to run sync? You know, when you do a matter. DD, it, but it wouldn't matter because the, the file system would understand. It should. Yeah. yeah. Does it always? I don't Whether know. it's sync to disk, it doesn't care, right? Well, that's a bit mysterious. I mean, like, if. Uh, you could try. <laughs> yeah, I have no other ideas. This, yeah, this it's a little bit mysterious. So we're, we're getting something something new here, but that's this, probably this tool okay. actually have um, a storage and a cache. And maybe when you were, did, you were running it while it was downloading. Yeah, maybe like it stored a cache of a, of a version of that file that maybe. it thinks is still current. It looks like it, maybe. The, the output game those showed that it was reanalyzed. Okay. Files. Yeah, I would expect it to be smart enough to pick up on the fact that something is different, but yeah, it's a little bit mysterious. Try it again. When in doubt, run it again. Do it, do it, sync, run it again. Lose, lose, do it. Yeah, and I'm also assuming that sudo is required for this. Weird. Oh, good call. Uh, yeah, try running it as root. Yeah. Unless it's already. I mean, it's possible. Do you really see if there's like hard links happening? Like the new. It's done at the lower level. It doesn't use hard links. The the ButterFS one doesn't use hard links. Darn. Oh wait, no, I'm totally looking it's at the wrong page. It's done at a transparent layer under, underneath that. I'm nearly positive. It's doing something at the file system level. Yeah, I guess if it wasn't lying to the to the rest of the uh, the system, that would kind of defeat the purpose, right? What would happen if you unmounted the... Uh, I'm nearly driving it and mounted again. Oh, we could try it. Actually, kind of related question. Is there any way to f detect that something is a hard link or not? Yeah. You yeah, use ls-li, I'll show you that. Yeah, yeah. the number of links or stat on it. I was wrong. Then you have to stat the other one to make sure there's yeah. an item number here. It's not related to, to this specifically, but I was trying to figure this out. Man, there's some... We'll weird leftovers in a system that I was trying to... Indeed. Uh, I forget. What, what the heck were we doing? Ls -li. Let's do it. Li? Oh, it is one, yeah. yeah. You're right. They've already got it. That's what they're calling. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit mysterious. 
Exactly. So yeah, that's that's a little bit weird. I'm not too sure. So you gotta come to Winnipeg to learn that. The lore. Absolutely. So yeah, that's, this is like this is kind of the extent there. Like I've uh, one of the core things that I'm trying to solve for with this whole deduplication situation is I'm trying to make this simple enough that somebody who isn't super techie can figure this out. So I'm a bit hesitant to go in deep with scheduled tasks or scheduled like automation. Ideally, I wanna make this easy enough that somebody who isn't terribly technical could just boot it up and kind of work it out using some kind of documentation. It's just, we're trying to account for the bus factor here. And so far, I'm not seeing anything that's polished or straightforward to that degree. So I'm kind of hesitant to go forward with any of the solutions that I've looked at so far. So that's kind of where we're at with this whole procedure. Ignore all this, it's boring. There is multiple NAS appliances that are available and I've looked at several and they're all either okay. Well, actually they're fine, but the dedupe functionality is just not commonly there. If you want to apply it, you have to configure it manually using the CLI, which kind of defeats the usability stuff. So I'm hesitant to go forward with those as well for the same reasons. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure. So that's pretty much it. Like this is a, this is a pretty lightweight demo. This is a pretty light presentation. This is kind of a problem that's in the process of being worked out. So it's, it's gonna be pretty chill. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> so there seems to be a problem with it that it has to do with the extent on the disk of the throw, so it doesn't always actually check the hash. Sometimes it just skips it. So yeah, if you yeah. give it the option of dash dash lookup extents equals no, mm -hmm. but it might work. Extents. Uh, close enough. Extends, extends, extends. What am I looking for? Dash dash extends or whatnot. We're going in there. Bro, I have to look up. Oh, what? Nice. Equals yes, please. Skip check something. Yes is the default. No is the Does it like just check the first chunk of the file or? No, apparently it does something with the way the files are laid out on the disk. Something with extent states that I don't understand. <laughs> Okay, so this is really some kind of optimization then. Yes. Okay. It's not a bug, it's a feature. They depend on the underlying file system type. Yeah, if they have the mm -hmm. same content but are laid out on a different extent structure, mm -hmm. they won't be deduped. Absolutely mm -hmm. noted. Don't make that note, I guess. Did I break it? The default was yes. So yeah. you want to turn that off. Wait, okay, so, so I got that this backwards. It ignores the extents and just does the checks. <laughs> oh, we got output this time. Let's go. Oh, well, let's see what we got here. Can Forger try to do two big blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, it's actually doing stuff this time. Cool, cool. That's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I monkeyed around this a little bit, trying to see if we could get some cool output. That's interesting. Well, it's... a hero. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to figure out is like, if you got something like a proof of concept, how do you operationalize it, you know? It's, yeah, I'm not sure how paranoid to be about it. It's an open question. And uh, as expected, the file system can't really tell the difference, which I guess is the point, but like, how do you, how do you know whether or not it's successful? How do you know how much real space you have to deal with? These are questions that I do not really have answers for, and that's a little bit concerning. Because if you're trying to spec out how much space you need, like if you're trying to squeeze all that data into the drives, like, uh, I don't want to wing it. Well, one of the things 
that you would potentially have to contend with if you're consolidating data is, especially using this method, your data set is larger than potentially your storage that you have available. So it has to be pre deduplicated, but it has to be deduplicated on a system that has access to all of those duplicates before it can be put on the destination media. Yeah. So you would have to do it in chunks where you add a bit, deduplicate it, yeah. then yeah. add more, deduplicate it. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty much so. the end game, yeah. It's kind of the, it's essentially the plan, is build some kind of box that can deal with the ingestion. You only need 270 terabytes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've already got the hard drives, right? So. I mean, we don't know, right? Maybe he does. I mean, the alternative answer is that cloud storage is cheap. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you're not wrong, it? yeah. What you can do is just have yeah. to the destination drive, I mean, and start plugging in the the duplicate drives, you copy from the duplicate to this. First, you generate the hash table from the drive you're reading. Then you copy anything that is not on the destination. Then you plug in the next drive, but you're keeping all the records of all the previous hashes. And then you get the hashes on the new drive, take the ones that are unique, new, copy them over, and you I mean, that's with limited number of drives that can be connected. That's my idea. I think it's basically the idea, like the, it's, I, I'm kind of on the fence because my understanding is that once you've deduped a bunch of data, it's hard to, you're kind of locking yourself into a specific solution. So if you've, uh, if you've done a bunch of dedupe, on ButterFS and you want to move it to another file system, the other file system is not going to necessarily know about the dedupe data, so you're going to end up with all the duplicates again. So you, But you have stuff like ButterFS sync, so you could well, carry would, that stuff over. You wouldn't over. end up with a new copy of the data. You wouldn't end up with new duplicates as long as you do a fresh copy from the deduplicated data set. Do well, depending on what method, so if you're doing file level deduplication, it's essentially marking the two files as completely identical and saying you only need one copy of that file. So if you can tell it to just pull out those unique files out of it, then you don't need that. If you're doing block level deduplication, mm -hmm. then it has to copy over all of the duplicates of the blocks because it doesn't know. The source system isn't capable of deduplicating the way that the source one did. Okay. I think this would be an actual advantage of using hard links in that case. That's uh, it's kind of hoping to avoid that. Yeah, it definitely doesn't use hard links. I was just looking yeah. it up. It, it actually does a trick where instead of two directory entries pointing to one inode, it has two different inodes pointing to the same data blocks. And the underlying ButterFS uh, does um, a copy on write so that when one of them gets modified, then it makes a copy of itself. Yeah. And, you, and you need that, otherwise, if something was writing to the data mm -hmm. in the middle of it, and the other program didn't expect yeah. it, then you, like mine, for instance, would be screwed up. So. Yeah. Is that the, the system uh, Mac OS uses? I've heard something similar about that. Like, I start to be alternatives because I've never heard of it. Apple has their own thing. Mm -hmm. a, a, Apple FS? Yeah, it'd be weird if it was in FreeBSD. Yeah. That would yeah. expect it to be. Yeah, it's their own thing. Or their own, but even in their own thing. Yeah. What you might be better off doing, if considering your your specific use case is not looking for, you're you're doing essentially a, a one migration process, yeah, and then it all lives together. Mm -hmm. What you need is some sort of migration process that that eliminates those duplicates and creates a clean data set for you. The, yeah, I guess the goal here is to just get to the point where we can start sorting things out. Like, we're not going to keep all the duplicates forever. We just don't want to have to eliminate the duplicates multiple times. So you kind of have to get it all in one place. And then... You don't need to kind of eliminate the duplicates. Yeah. Like, as long as you keep a master record of all the hashes, mm -hmm. you can keep pulling out the unique ones, mm -hmm. and then you will have a final migration with all the unique data sets data that exists. Now everything else can go to hell. Like whatever you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. Have you tried CBS Git GitHub? CBS? Current version system. 
is for basically for programs. If you write a C program or something, and you've got a dozen versions of it until you find the uh, final version. Not parental control. No, that, that, I haven't that looked into it too much in this context. I'm not sure. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Okay, can do binary, but it wouldn't really help you. This, I can't see. You'd have to use binary stuff to help you. Have to pre, you'd have to have the premium get level of get up I think you're on the right path as your first step. I mean, you can, yeah. as you're dumping it in, and it's just going to do what you want. But you like I said, you have to, you're going to be, every drive you dump in, you rerun the do dump in another do. That's, that's essentially the strategy, yeah. Like the fact that you can run it on demand in this case is, is an advantage. I'm just worried about locking us into a specific set of decisions or tools that have like foot guns later on. But. Yeah. You can easily take it back out, easily run hash stuff on it, run programs to determine duplicates later, yeah. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, I might just be massively overthinking this whole thing. Because it's at a lower, it's a slightly lower level than, than the application layer, so. That's true, yeah. There's a lot of uh, fear and doubt floating around about uh, ButterFS, and just people kind of being paranoid, but it's like, honestly, it's so far it's pretty decent, yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. It just works. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the extent of my demo. It's real straightforward. This is about as far as we are. There's uh, there's a lot of other things in the uh, deduplication world, uh, notably the Red Hat solution VDO, which is something that I also am really curious to play with. But it's it's too early. Like, I just need to throw a lot more time at this. So is there, uh, is there any questions around this or anything that we'd like to uh, kind of dig deeper into? Or is that, uh, is that kind of the extent? What up? Yeah, the, uh, so you mentioned that FS had some like hardware requirements that were like, not great for a potato computer, as you put it. Mm -hmm. um, so is that something you've experimented with yet, or that's something you've kind of just decided against for the time being? Not yet. I'm not opposed to just rolling true NAS scale and calling it a day. Like In terms of the user interface and just the community around it, that by itself is just a huge plus. Uh, you don't have to... Uh, even if, if, if I get hit by a bus, it's not that hard to find somebody with the expertise for that software to just use it. The main things that, the main questions that I still have around it are, is ECC a hard requirement? Question mark, question mark. And what kind of failure modes can you expect with the software? Because it's, it's very different to spin it up in a lab, try it out and kind of do basic requirement testing versus run it for five years and see what kind of problems you run into, you know? I'm not opposed to just going the true NAS route, but uh, it's, it's an open question at this point. So the, the need for ECC, like, yeah, I think you touched on it earlier. You have like a large working set in memory. Mm -hmm. That's kind of just always going. Yes. Uh, but that need for ECC is lowered when you're doing it as like a maintenance operation. Mm -hmm. You don't have that all in memory all at once in the same sort of way, so I guess that's the workaround in this case, right? Yeah. Like, I'm just uh, chewing on the problem myself here. It's it's fair. Like, and also <clears throat> suspect that a lot of the recommendations around uh, TrueNAS and ZFS assume that you're using it interactively. So if the performance is terrible, but you're running your, uh, your like, dedupe job on a schedule, which is kind of how it's set up in TrueNAS, and you have it like running like once a day or whatever, and most of the time the system is not in heavy use for that pool, who freaking cares if the performance sucks, you know? Yeah. So that might not even be an issue, but I'm not sure yet. I think with ZFS dedupe, uh, which I haven't looked at in a long time, I think the problem would be if you're using large files, ZFS may not be capable of comparing those files without loading the entire file into RAM. Mm. So when it wants to, you know, to compare blocks between files on the file system, if it can only load two or four gigabytes worth of blocks at a time and you have you know, 20 terabytes of data, even just loading that in and out of RAM, in and out of RAM, like, it would just be impossible for it to actually load any significant amount of data to compare it. That's about fair. I'm thinking so, this is probably... I think ZFS has guidelines on RAM per Per store per like terabyte. Yeah. And yeah, I think they're pretty significant. Uh, I think also when they say the performance sucks, they mean it like your file system is at a standstill, like will not work if you don't meet the minimums. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 
where the hard limit is is a bit of an open question. I've also heard of some people doing some weird cowboy setups where if they don't have enough RAM, they'll use like a scratch disk. Like, I think this is mostly a server thing because they're talking about like Intel Optane just to deal with the read writes. It's like, is this realistic for a home setup? I don't know. But uh, just to slap a shitty SSD there and just uh, set it up as swap and go ghetto. I mean, it'll and work until it doesn't. Well, I mean, you tell me. I just lost a bunch of stuff. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, like, th this is my concern. It's because, yeah, sure, it'll work. But, like, the plan here is this shouldn't take a massive amount of effort over multiple years to maintain. So I just. Oh, it's a storage, man. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, does anyone know a way around it when it comes to storage? Yeah, swipe your That's credit card and upload it yeah. to Adobe. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's buying from someone who actually did all the work. I yeah, mean, it's, this is like, I, I don't do a lot of storage admin, so this is very new to me. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff in here that, uh, that seems dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So, I'm a bit nervous to make any decisions that lock us into a specific path, you know? It's, I mean, just set aside like a third of your hard drives and just have it so that uh, those, anything in them can blow up at any time and fill your boots. Yeah. And and you're backups not, you're for your backups. You're not touching your original data, right? You're just still going to leave those 92 hard drives alone. That's right, yeah. So you can always go back. That's, that's, that's true. That's a big assumption there, Blake. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's assuming <laughs> it. I mean, that's, that's the whole point, you know? Some of these drives have been around for like 10, 12 years. Are they going to boot next so time? I don't know. We'll find out. There's a question about stuff, uh, with, there's the you know, possibility, the potential that you could just go back. And the there's a the question that you don't have back. Back. That's something that comes up a lot in these uh, archiving discussions. Yeah, you don't want to destroy the originals. Hopefully you never need them, but, you know, why tempt fate? Okay. Actually, speaking of which, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you want to keep the old stuff in case you have to prove that you did something years ago. Right? Yeah, that's legit. <laughs> Yeah, that's good advice, man. That's honestly good advice. That's all well and good, but, uh, you know, I've got a, a Fortran punch cards at home. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, basic programs at home. Uh, See, that's a flex. Yeah. And then the good drives. Who still got there a drive? I have a whole bunch. It's not used. It's kind of why you keep like Windows 95 uh, textbooks on your desk, you know, just flex on the new guys. <laughs> Who has a side quest drive? That's <laughs> there you go. Any other questions for Chris before we wrap it up? <laughs> That's pretty no, much. One thing I wanted to add to. Link in yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Although I do want to quickly mention, there's a few recommended readings. Mm -hmm. This is not directly related to the better or fast thing, but if you are interested in, in uh, personal archiving in any sense. Uh, this is in the uh, the chat. I will drop it there. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of information from the Library of Congress breaking down how to do this in a way that uh, whatever information will likely survive you. It's really good. I would recommend reading this if you have any interest in this at all. Try this question. Go ahead, Troy. Well, yeah, uh, just adding on to the earlier point about ZFS's comparison thing. Um, so the way they do the checksum. And the file comparison is like each, uh, I don't know, extent, but each like block size has that block's checksum in the pointer. So I think that's how it's able to do the large file comparison. Because it only has to go like compare one thing per block instead of like block against block. But all those checksums can take up like gigabytes. Like, <coughs> yeah. It still can. Yeah, to like a like, database. Yeah, so it's, it probably needs the whole hash table yeah. around too. Yeah. That's, that's the. Yeah. Like, well, you get a, it's a reduction of. Quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. While working through this, I've gained a new appreciation for the work that st storage admins do. Like, there's a lot of stuff you got to take into account when you're doing this.